Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Better Call Saul, Season 3, Episode 1. It's called Mabel, full spoilers for the episode as always. It has been such a long time since we got to talk about Saul. Such it's a been like a full year, right? Yeah, because it's on later this year, so it's, it's yeah. been, give or take a couple of weeks, it's almost exactly a year since the that, that's what I was thinking. last season finished. Because last year it started in February, so they finished about mid-April, so yeah, we're a couple of weeks off probably. Yeah. But no, nah, it's been such a long time. <laughs> it's so good to have it back. I'd, I'd kind of forgotten just how well it's directed. Before, and you know, nothing else, just, you, know, you just look at it and you're like... I had, yes. right? But the only reason why I hadn't forgotten this year is because I did last year. Because yeah. last year I remember getting into the premiere, going, "Oh, Saul's back, good, yeah, I'm excited, fun." And then, like after the episode, I remember just, I remember tweeting this exact phrase. I remember going on Twitter and saying, after I watched the episode, I forgot how good Saul was. It's like sliding through a warm bar. <laughs> that was the <laughs> so phrase I, I used. <laughs> that's the thing. I knew it was that good. Yet still, I managed to underestimate it. Like it's just, it it starts the direction. It's just like, oh yeah, this is this is what this is. I want to start with a really weird observation. This is this doesn't really just apply to Saul, but it did it twice in this episode, which is why I kind of I was thinking about it. Just how boring for the actors it must be to film those time lapse sequences because there's a sequence at the start and the, the black and white stuff where he's just working at the uh, the Cinnabon, and mm. there's like a time lapse of people coming in and out and they're working behind the counter, and I'm like. When they were filming this, in reality, they are... They have to spend a whole day there. It wasn't a whole day, it was probably a couple hours, but yeah, whatever, like yeah. they're actually having to function as if they were working in a Cinnabon for like two hours. So it's like, it must yeah. be so... Even if they're not really doing it, even if they're just moving around and making the motions, it's still... Yeah, they're still going to be doing it for that length of time. It's a really monotonous like task, I think. And then later yeah. on, Mike with the car as well, there was a time lapse as he was checking. And I'm like, he's still, at, he's still walking around that car, pulling everything out and checking it. Maybe not... Yeah. Because obviously they may be cheating a lot, but everything will be listening for him already. But still, he's, yeah. it's a good, good bit of time. I just oh. uh, so yeah. One thing I did forget though is I forgot that because it's a premiere uh, of the we season, get the opening. We, we get the uh, the future, present day, whatever you want to call it, black and white oh, sequence. Yeah, uh, it was funny because for a long time it was on, and he was at his job. He was doing stuff. We got a time lapse. He went and got his lunch, and he was kind of just kind of pathetic <laughs> reading this book with his lunch. You know, I loved, I loved that the, the song was playing, um, Sugar Town by uh, Sinatra. The, the first line is, uh, I got troubles, but they won't last. And it kind of feels like Saul being really optimistic to himself with that line. Hmm. But he, he's sitting there in the, the, the bed she's eating. And it was funny, because right, right around this point, I was like, is this about to end? It can't end. We've not had anything really happen. Because like, we already know where he's been. We know, we know everything we've seen is just a sort of reaffirmation of what we've seen before. Yeah, the monotony of his current yeah. life. So I'm like, something has to happen to make this notable. And sure enough, uh, th- this guy who's shoplifted runs in and he like he's clearly sees him and the guy knows he's seen him, but the guy hides in one of those little photo booths. Yeah. And then the, the security guard and the policeman walk past and they come up and they try to talk to him and Saul kind of hesitates. And I, I, at this point, I was thinking a mixture of things. I was like, is, does he want to let the guy get away with it so that like it's just a little taste of the. It's kind of living through him. Yeah, a little taste of the criminal life that he used to have. Is, is that what he's going to do? And then it's almost like this is over quicker, and it gets the police away because close ups of the badge, constant close ups of the badge. Yeah. We've seen this in the, the last one we saw where he was trapped in the the sort of garbage like dumpster mm. area where he couldn't ring the alarm because if he did, people yeah, would come and draw attention him. to himself. Yeah. So, but he's like, no, he just sort of points. He just points at the booth, and they, they go get the guy. And, Saul, of course, directed very methodically. Very, you, you feel the, the sort of—I wouldn't quite call this tension in this scene, but it's just if it, you feel the the beat to beat. Do you, do you know the moment of it I particularly loved? It's when he's sitting down on the bench eating his lunch, and the song stops, and then it cuts out to this wide shot looking down at him, hmm. and it's like, oh, something's about to happen. Like you can just yeah. you can just feel it. It's it's almost like music itself, where. There's no reason why we should know something's about to happen. Obviously, I mean, we know something's going to happen because it's a scene. Something has to happen. There's no point. But you but, know it's it, it's coming now. But it's kind of like how a song will set up. You know, I look at when a song does the uh, the thing where it'll it'll have a second of silence. Like it'll drum up to a chorus, but then it'll go silent, and then the drums yeah. will kick back in. That's what it's kind of like. It's like you know it's about to come, but it makes you wait for the moment of silence before it kicks mm. in. Yeah, that's what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. 
so, so they arrest the guy and they run off and then the cop turns around and they're like, uh, good job, sir. And they're walking off and <laughs> Saul can't help himself. He stands up and shouts, get a lot. Wait, he shouts it really weird at first. He sort of mumbles his words and he mixes yeah. things up and then he repeats, he repeats it. He says, get a lawyer. And yeah. the, the guy's just like, screw you, dude. <laughs> and the cop's just like, what? What the hell? You, you can uh, see it in his eyes though when he's staring at it, it's like, I, I, he wants to be doing something. He just, he's he's itching to be a lawyer again. But it's, it's, it's this weird thing where the kid, it's not like the kid, like, the kid's clearly just shoplifted. He's done wrong and he's going to get slapped in the wrist for it. Maybe, you know, whatever the punishment will be for a simple bit of shoplifting. Yeah. But he feels the need to interject and do that thing he does where he protects the scumbags. <laughs> yeah, he can't help himself, can he? And it's kind of glorious and it's, uh just that. Uh, and, so we come back to the main story. We 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 did this twice actually in this episode, where we get we get the the previous events. Well, I mean, hang on. There's still a oh. little bit more of the the bit the, the uh the the black and white bit. Oh, you're right. Sorry, yeah. He he, he collapses. You're right. He goes back to the store yeah. and collapses. Yeah. But now now the authorities are going to come. It'll be like you know medical people come and check yeah. on him. But yeah. this is it. Will his identity hold up to the scrutiny? Yeah. I mean, it should. Like, if they've sent up the should. fake ID and all the rest of it, they're not going to dig that deep if it's just a case of, oh, you need to go to the hospital and get yeah, checked yeah. out. It but... should, but you've seen, we've seen how terrified he is of every little thing that you just don't know. It does feel like he's been overcautious, but at the it same does. time, it's... You know, yeah. We'll see he's the goes. one with the knowledge of these things. Yeah. Mm. But so, so we go back to... And, Twice it does this in this episode where it repeats the sort of the final moments of the scene that led to this last episode in the finale of season two, where we hear the conversation from the outside, the, the foil curtain, yeah, and he comes out. And it's funny because I don't know if I this went exactly the way I expected it to. You know, we had that click where he recorded them with the confession mm. in the finale. Like we we were like, oh god, what's he going to do with this tape? And and. But quite quickly, and not in this scene specifically, but later on, quite quickly, like Howard points out all the flaws with this. Like this doesn't hold up. It's a secret recording. It's this. It's that. There's so many legal stumbling blocks to this bit of evidence for whatever yeah. this is. Uh, but Chuck's like, oh no, this, we can do something with it, and we'll get to what that is and we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll speculate what it is. But what I really liked about this scene, so Saul goes out, he makes the phone call to Howard, say, right, Chuck's coming back. I've I've dealt with the the crisis. Right, he goes mm. back inside. And they're in, and Chuck's already taking the stuff down off the wall, which is kind of almost, he's almost been a little uh, arrogant with his victory here because he's taken it, it's like he's he's fixed too quick. He, yeah. he's, he's almost been a lot, just goading him a little bit to figure it out, and he's not. But so I was like, all right, I'll help. And he comes up and he starts ripping the tape off. And I just love this moment because it was this little metaphor where Chuck comes down and says, no, 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 don't rip it off quickly. You're going to, you're taking the varnish off the wall. You want to, you're like, you're gonna be methodical. Gotta be methodical it. and take it down slowly, and you know, j- j- you know, Jimmy cracks a joke about it being like wax on, wax off, and yeah. correct kid. And Chuck has no time for movie references, clearly. Uh, but you can tell he's kind of like annoyed that he has to go slowly. But it's and he gets distracted almost immediately. Like he does a little bit, and then he gets distracted by the book. Yeah, and that, that's just a summation of of their entire characters, where Chuck yeah. always does everything by the book and. Yeah, you know, very exactly as it has to be done, and and Jimmy just takes the short way out every yeah. time. Yeah, he just wants to rip it off, and then when he starts to do it the proper way, it lasts about five seconds, and then he gets distracted by something. He gets bored every time. Yeah. We've we've seen it over and over again. And he has this moment with Chuck where he tries to like bond. He tries to like bring up this book that's from their childhood, and he talks about oh, Grandma used to read it. No, I read it to you, and then. Even more specifically, Jimmy puts in a little thing because obviously the whole thing he did it, he made Chuck think he was losing his memory <laughs> because he, mm. the little mistake with the address and that his memory wasn't to be trusted. He's like, "Oh, you've got a great memory, Chuck. You remember reading me this?" And it's good, and it, it almost feels a little bit awkward. Like you can see the the the, the vain attempt of trying to patch up the relationship, yeah. and Chuck's not having it. But of course, we know Chuck's just being quite seedy himself so it's He's just playing the game yeah well because we spoke about we spoke about this a lot last season how chuck does things by the book but it's not necessarily the moral way of doing things like the way they stole the, the whole uh, verde client yeah. from kim like even though they do things by the book he does it in a really malicious manner it's very haha i know the book well enough to use it against you and corrupt it and exploit yeah, it yeah he, he knows how to use it in his way whereas yeah. Saul just ignores it yeah uh so it, it, it gives you this weird sort of he is villainous and you almost want to root for Saul more than him because Saul 
for all the bullshit he does, for all the shortcuts he takes, his heart is often in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. It's flawed, certainly, don't get me wrong. I'm not... I think that relates to even the you know the opening scene, the black and white, where he tells the kid to get a lawyer. It's, it's not that he's wanting to protect the, the criminals, I don't, I don't think. It's just that he mm. wants to help. He's like, this kid literally, like he needs someone to help him, and he, he just wants to do that because his heart is in that place. Yeah. So... No, so that was that was a great scene right from the start, and it it, it sets up the episode where it was just, I think Saul's story in this one. Obviously, we see him see him with Kim. He's late for his appointments. He's he's got like all these pensioners coming in for. Yeah, for he his... kind of misses most of the day by the look of it. Yeah, uh, and Kim knows why he was gone, so she's not super pissed. But it's like, no, they're my clients now. Like once they're with me, we're not, we're not because like they set up last season. They're not a law firm where they're together. They just share a building almost kind of thing yes. but they both have clients and they, they help each other with the rent of the building but they're not sharing things and and that's to protect her because she knows he gets up to creative creative <laughs> practices creative yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm calling it creative but he comes in and i, I really like the sort of he gets the names wrong of the people which is funny because like forgetting things is exactly what he made chuck think he was doing which yeah. I, I like that little touch and it's, it's interesting because obviously we've seen how he is with the old people in in the past and how how much he actually does pay attention to detail, so it, it feels like he's slipping when he messes that up. Yeah, yeah, it, it does slip in, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, Kim tr- tries to uh, help him, because she thinks he's pissed at her at first, so I, I like this small moment, because I think it comes back to, even though he is such a messed up character, that him and Kim do have a genuine relationship and have a genuine affection for each other, they try and help each other. Mm, definitely. Like once she realised, oh, this is this isn't about me. This is this isn't about me taking his clients. This is about Chuck, and this mm. is about Jimmy wanting to be in good terms with his brother again. So I, I like that side of it. Uh, of course, the other big scene was Saul in this episode, though. He, so he's taking more clients. He's he's doing well with the old people again. He's uh, looking at their photos despite them being born in the ship. By the sounds of it, uh, <laughs> just trying to rush her out the door. <laughs> well, I feel like he's he's already been through like his his own private war going through these photos in the first place. He, he's just admitted that he's looked through. Her nephew's wedding or whatever it was, yeah. And then she's and now, like, now she wants to show the the, the kids confirmation with all the flowers. I couldn't do that job. I I have the, I do not have the people skills that Saul has. You don't have the patience to go through that. Patience, people skills, all those things. I don't have those things. I can't, no. I can't do it. Uh, but we see because it was funny because it was in the previously on the the whole thing because we snuck into the well, I say snuck. He sort of goaded his way on to the. The, the army the base, base. Yeah. yeah, with the, the 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 planes and the pilot, and that this soldier here, this 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 officer is here, and he's pissed because <laughs> he's seen the <laughs> ad and he knows he get lied to. <laughs> yeah, and he, he comes in, and it's, again. It, what I like about this scene is that Saul gets very agitated in this scene, and he kind of loses his temper. And what I kind of like about that is that to me, that's because of whatever everything that just happened with Chuck, because it's that moment where he he, he breaks and he says something like a. Uh, Oh, why do you always have to be on the moral high ground? Make me feel like, and it, it stops himself. And then himself. he realizes what he's talking about. He's like, "Hang yeah. on, that's not re- that's not what this is. This isn't this person." Yeah. But it's piling on. It's just like yeah. that's how it's making him feel that way again. And he's realizing yeah. that it's it, it's piling on to him, and it feels like, it feels like a a culmination of like build up of things that he's been, you know, yeah. he's been shoving down. But now it's like, no, I'm yeah, yeah. He's been repressing it, and it's all coming back to the surface now. Yeah. And it, I it, love I love this plotline in general, though. Just the idea that his actions have consequences again. It's coming back, and it will be something he has to deal with. And he's worried about it. Is there possibly some guilt? With him, I'm inclined to think it's less guilt and more, oh crap, I might actually have to yeah, deal yeah, with this at some concern. point. Yeah, yeah, it's more concern. Yeah, because uh, as the soldier says, you know, the wheel keeps turning. And Saul basically, it's, it's like when he regains his wits, he's like, all right, okay, this this kid's threatening me with all these things. Take the ad down, or I'm going to sue. Yada yada yada, and I I think there's a moment where Saul realizes, all right, okay, I know how to play this game, right? You did let me on the base. That was you. I tricked you into doing that. You're supposed to know better, kind of thing. And he mm. tries to talk him back down. And it seems like it works. I mean, the soldier does storm off, but he kind of drops the threats. He just leaves angry, you know, angry. Yeah, he, but it still feels like this could come back at any moment. Oh, it absolutely could. I I feel like maybe the soldiers realized that maybe they didn't have a clear cut. Is a case as he thought he did. Maybe he has to actually go and con- consult supervisors and consult higher ups and go oh, through the channels. Get, what, if, what if he hires Kim against against Saul? <laughs> um, 
I don't think she I would mean, take the case. M- maybe not, but what if he tried? Uh, and that'd be a great scene just to watch. And then she has to hear how he, how he, how he did this. At, yeah. least, at least in this case, he's not... Uh, this wouldn't be disbarment stuff. This is not him breaking rules as a lawyer. This is just him breaking rules as a citizen. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. That, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's like he's, he's making an ad. The fact that it's for a law firm, I don't think matters. I think it's just he... No, it's more about uh, trespassing on the property. Uh, yeah, 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 and lying about it. But again, the soldier did let him on, so I, I actually do think he has like a case here to just be like, well, he did it let me could, on. It could go either way. He did let him on, but like this was false pretenses, so it's like it could uh, you could argue. You don't know. If, you don't it, know if he'd win, but you could argue. But is it up to the soldier to to like vet it properly and say it probably should be? Yeah. yeah. Like if if I trick a security guard into letting me into a store with there's no employees around and then I take something, is it like sure I still shoplifted fine, but like that guard's losing his job <laughs> or at least getting suspended. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you're an idiot. <laughs> and in this sense, nothing went missing either. It's yeah, not true. like he took anything. So. As, as he points out, the plane's still there. <laughs> yeah, plane's there. No one got hurt. No, no, no. There's no lasting repercussions for anyone. Yeah. Except, of course, this soldier feels like he's been cheated. And Jimmy cheats cheats a lot of people, so... He does. But as, I suppose the biggest lasting repercussion would be if this soldier does bring it up, he's the one who has to bear the responsibility of letting him onto the base. As, as this all points out. So. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a debate all around. Uh, meanwhile, Kim, of course, is kind of feeling the effects because she has to sit there and hear Paige at, you know, at uh, Mesa Verde. She, she's, she's worked out all doc- documents for their, their next... Uh, thing because remember it got thrown out because of yeah. the, the, the mistake so they had to reschedule all that and she, she's she's impressed Paige all that but Paige starts like mocking uh, mock, mocking Chuck he's like oh he had the gall to say this and the gall to pretend that it was someone else's fault and mm. and Kim like I don't think she knows she doesn't know the details but she she knows <laughs> like that was that was very clear yeah she knows that it's not really his fault and she's sucking it up uh, and one of those great little moments that I love that this show does is her at the computer She's like, oh, I want to recheck everyone, just make sure there's no mistakes. And she's just, she changes a, a comma to a full stop, then she changes it to like a semicolon, then it's no, a dash. It's, 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 it's to dashes, I think, first, and then she ends on the semicolon. Oh, whatever. The point yeah, is, yeah. She, she, she goes back, she, she changes, she goes to like five different types of punctuation for this one thing. Yeah. And this is the sort of thing where I'm like, I'm not losing sleep. If, if I have a semicolon instead of a comma, you know what? I'm not going to... Yeah, yeah. It's, not... it's just going to show how much of a perfectionist she is. Yeah. And how, but, how... but it gets to a point where she's like, nope, I've just got to call it because otherwise yeah. she will be here all night. Yeah, but she doesn't know. She changes her mind. She prints it and she goes back. Exactly. And again, sh- showing how like her and Saul actually are compatible in a relationship, he realises this isn't just going to be two minutes and he opens the paint again and starts painting over the rainbow. Yeah. Like, it ends with him... He doesn't even say anything to her. He doesn't complain. He doesn't... He just he knows, so he's like, I'm yeah. going to open the paint and I'm going to get back to it. Yeah. Uh, Might as well be productive while he's there. Exactly, and uh, but I like that. I like that it shows that they do have this, that they have this understanding of each other that is actually really strong and really is, yeah. compatible with each other. It's just professionally, <laughs> is where they they don't quite jive. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe that's why this situation will work and t- until they come in and take the office because it's partly in his name or something <laughs> when shit goes down. In which it's case, possible. poor Kim. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about Mike. Yeah. Let's talk about Mike and let's talk about... So we again, we end with the this, this scene, him getting the note on the car from last yep. last season. He stops the car, he, he checks for... Uh, bugs. Uh, I was also thinking maybe bomb, but bugs. Mainly. I was thinking of bomb as well. Yeah. Like, it's the sort of thing. He's being paranoid. He's just like, it, no, he's checking it. It was when he took it to the the junkyard and he got it up in the, the forklift and he started going really, really throws. Okay, this is this is specifically bug because yeah, you would put the bomb inside the car. I don't think unlikely. Maybe under the pedals. No, but, no, that, that's why the first one where he's yeah. just checking under the wheels. It's like okay, that that could have been a bomb still. Yeah, but he's check he's checking everything. He's pulling out the lights. He's doing everything to get the time lapse of him going around the car. He he's going super thorough. He's pulling out everything. He's pulling out parts of the car that I didn't know you could pull out. <laughs> <laughs> he dismantles the entire yeah. thing. And then he's in when if I can't find anything, he's like, "I'll keep it. I'm not taking it." <laughs> yeah, he just there. doesn't trust it. He can still be here. And let's, let's again go back to the methodical good direction of this show, where every part of this I thought was engaging. And when he's sitting there waiting for his cab in the in the office, and he turns around and he he sees the the caps for the 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 fuel. 
yeah. uh, thingy. And he, he's like, wait a minute, that comes off. And Joe, you know I love about that is I love that as smart as he is, it is believable he wouldn't have thought of that. Well, that's the thing, because he took it off and he just threw it away. Yeah. Like, because he looked uh, to check inside the fuel pipe. Yeah. So he did that, he just didn't think of opening it. Yeah, because to be honest, I don't know if I knew you could actually take that bit off. Like, it's yeah. just, it's the sort of thing you buy that a lot of people wouldn't have thought of. Yeah. So, and you, again, you see, you do see him take it off. So you know that he's went to that part of the car. He's, he's checked in there. Yeah. But, so, we don't see what he sees, though. No, we don't. Not straight away. No, we don't. Uh, he doesn't he seem to do anything with that one. He, he goes home and checks his other car, his main car that he, he typically has. And takes off the, the cap, he brings it in. And he looks inside it. And this is where I got a little bit confused for a little bit of the episode. Because to me, it looked like a USB stick. It did to me at first, too. Yeah. And I thought, oh, someone's left him a message or something on a USB stick. Yeah. It was when then he, he put it away and didn't look into it. Like, like try and plug yeah, it into anything. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's not a USB stick. Oh, which, by the way, Energizer got their money's worth with this episode. <laughs> we, we saw two sets of Energizer batteries in this episode. Yeah. Two separate devices. I, I like that this tracking device uses an Energizer battery. <laughs> Hey, everyone's got to have batteries. Look, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because a, a, a tracking device I expect to be something that is only government, military, that kind of thing. So I expect to just have proprietary stuff. Oh, really? So, so the idea that you can buy a, a tracking device that you literally just put a AA battery into for some reason just makes me chuckle. I, whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know. It never, never occurred to me that that was a, yeah. a thing that, that would be a problem. Not a problem. Not, not a problem, just... but just something you'd even notice. Uh, I don't know. But, so he, he, he gets his vet guy. Again, we see him at work and he, he makes the choice to try and... It, it's almost that like you see the thought process where, okay, he's found it, he knows what it is, he's understood what's happening. But mm. he has the idea when he's at work. He's at the uh, the little booth at the at the courthouse. And he takes out the, the cap and leaves it behind. So obviously they're not tracking him. He goes and says, can you get me this? Because he, he took all the serial codes and all that off of it. Mm. And he gives it to the vet guy. And I'm like, okay, he makes a smart dude. He's playing something here. I'm not it's sure like, what it is yet. Where is he going with this? I'm not sure what it is yet. And, he, and we see that he gets one. A couple of days later, he's got one. And he he, he, he has his own, like, uh, the actual tracking computer part of it. And he, he, he takes the battery out. He says, okay, right. So that that's, that shows that it's not working. The, 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 you know, the, the signal goes away. Obviously, it would. But he's, he's checking it. He's seen how it reacts when he yeah. does things to it. So, all right, he's doing something smart here. I know, I'm not quite sure. And it was when he brought the other one out and he hooked up the, the, the radio to it so it was still yeah. getting a signal. I'm like, oh, I know what and, he's about to do. It just runs down the battery. I know what he's about to do. Well, yeah. I don't think it's so much that he's running down the battery as that it's, he's not ready to to catch them yet. He, he, but by hooking that in, they're still getting a signal because it's, yeah, yeah. it's hooked up to something. Uh so he, he eventually takes out the battery. It's night time. He's put his own that he has the tracker for in his, in his main car. And then he just sits and waits yeah. with some nuts and just, just waits. For a long time. We get the time lapse again of, of all the clouds going over. It looks gorgeous. This was a very time lapse episode, may I add. It was. I mean, to be fair, lapse. this and um, um, Breaking Bad, they've been very t- the time lapse shows. They kind of always have been. I don't think I ever noticed it because I don't think we've ever had three in one episode before. But I noticed it in this one. There was a lot of time lapsing going on. Oh, I've noticed it before. Yeah, fair, fair. It's been a year, all right. Maybe I'm just forgetting the yeah. time lapses. But so eventually, someone comes, and this is actually the end of the episode because the the car takes off, and Mike just casually strolls out to his car. He's got his tracking device. He can see it's X number of meters away. Gets in his car and drives off, and that's our. And I was almost a little bit disappointed because I thought it would end with him pulling up to wherever the car was going to arrive to. And we'd see maybe a certain someone behind a window, or or maybe a certain restaurant, or a certain yeah, a certain restaurant for example. Yeah, be, what we see, and that's when we go to credits. Instead, they played it as a noise in pursuit, suspense. So that's, that's, that's fine. That's cool. Well, I'm, I'm fi- coming back. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I, but I just I was maybe expecting the I, yeah, but just a little touch more on the, the end. But that's fine. I loved everything about all this plot right from the start where the music's going his car you know before he stops to check it and it's just bombing it down and there's such uh such motion in just the car mo- going down that road yeah like you really feel it you, yeah you feel his paranoia he knows he's yeah. being watched so whatever he was doing before whatever he was thinking of doing about killing uh took or whatever you know 
Like this is now this is now priority one. Someone is watching me. Someone put that note in my car. Yeah. I have to know how and they're then, tracking me. Who it and is. then when he's dismantling the car, every moment of it, you're just watching, waiting for him to find something. And he doesn't just know who either. He, does. he does not know who. And that, that's what worries him even more. He doesn't know who it is. And he doesn't know why. So that this is priority one on one. He's doing all this because he needs to know. Yeah. So. And- yeah, and then, and then even the little things like when he goes to see the vet and the vet's like, yeah, it's going to cost you. And he's like, yeah, okay. And he's like, all right, how, how much? And he's like, well, it'll normally be 500, but, you know, half hours. I'm going to be, be a grand. Ha- and just in the morning, casually, specifically. <laughs> no, no, no problem. It's just yeah. instantly just hands it over. He's very businesslike about it. Yeah. Uh, Mike is very methodical, which is why the methodical direction really works for him, because that's yeah. kind of how he does things. He, and you see his plans forming. Like, he doesn't, obviously, in fact, one of the things I love about his plot lines in the show, it was the same a lot of the time last season, is that his entire storyline through an entire episode might go without hardly any dialogue. It'll just be him doing, just doing stuff. something. Yeah. And you get the thought process. And when it comes together and you realize what he's doing, you're like, oh, that is actually really smart. <laughs> he's such a, a visual actor, isn't he, in that sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great stuff. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess the one thing we've not spoken about is back to Chuck. Yep. Back to Chuck, and Ernesto comes over. He's been coming over to give him his groceries and uh, whatnot. And do you know what I love? I love that Chuck says, "Oh, did you get the the, the things?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I got them." And I'm like, "What are they? Are they talk about condoms or the 14? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's saying. Like, they may even say the word. Just say batteries. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to shock you if you say the word batteries, Chuck. <laughs> Calm down. And I think that's just it. He's so paranoid about everything electronic yeah. that he, he doesn't even want to say it in case it invokes it. <laughs> uh, and he puts on a little act. He mm. puts on a little act. He, he he struggles with the tongs. He's trying to put the batteries in the tape recorder. And he's like, oh, no, I can't do this myself. Ernesto, come and, come and put the it's, batteries it's, in. Uh, it's like we know immediately he's overacting because we've seen him all day, you know, taking down all the, the foil. And we've seen him be fine around this tape recorder multiple times. Yeah, he, he kind of, like, he takes keeps his, his hand away. from it. Yeah. He, but he's never been like this with it. What... What well, what I think I like about this now is that I'm never going to trust Chuck again. <laughs> every time, yeah. every time he's doing something, I'm going to is he playing at it? Is he is he just he's, he's such a slimy bastard? But Ernesto puts the the batteries in, and he, the tape's been queued up. Chuck Chuck has queued it up to the exact point just to hear the very key bit of information. It's, it's Saul's voice, and it's talking about the numbers, talking about the date, and changing. He doesn't hear a lot of it, but the, it's the way Chuck comes in shouting, "Oh, turn that off! Turn that off right now!" And Ernesto. Yeah. Well, it's turned off. And he's like, right, you have to be be aware. This is attorney client privilege. You can't. You 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 do work for the firm. You you are beholden to that rule as well. Yeah. But he knows, even though he says, you can't tell anyone for whatever reason. You can't tell anyone anything. He knows he's going to. He knows that he's going to tell Jimmy. Yeah, because what he's banking on here is that Saul isn't good enough of a lawyer to realize that this tape is almost useless. Perhaps uh, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something else to it as well. I don't maybe. know yet, because obviously we have the scene with with Howard where, where where we go through all this stuff, like exactly why it can't be used. And I feel like Saul would know these things. Maybe I I think what it is though is that it does make things muddy. Even if he knows, even if Chuck and Howard know, okay, it would never hold up in court to the point where they'd get him convicted of something or whatever. I think what he might try and do is that if Saul gets a, an understanding that this tape exists, I think Chuck down the line might threaten to ruin Kim. Because by bringing all this out into the opening and talking about how this was stolen from him again, and I think it murkies the water so much that it maybe gives them a... Because even though he, he does say in the scene at one point, oh, it wouldn't ruin them publicly, and I'm, I don't know if I agree with that. Like I feel like it might. Yeah, maybe. What, what I'm wondering is, so if Saul knows it exists, he's going to try and get rid of it. Does that legitimize the tape then like watching him try and destroy the evidence oh maybe yeah uh does that like add some weight to it failing that even even if he just then gets someone breaking and entering <laughs> uh, yeah exactly <laughs> which you know would be a, a weird thing but uh, you know stranger things have happened or maybe if he knows the tape exists does he does that then make, make Saul think other people know about it so he'll bring it up in front of more people and therefore mm. more people will hear him c- confess to the said crime yeah, is, is, is that what Chuck's plan is? Is that oh, he'll assume that Howard knows, so he'll come up to Howard and start talking about it, and yeah. instantly it's like there's definitely a game here. And Chuck and Saul are both smart guys; they're both ahead of us, frankly. <laughs> like they, well, they they're playing a game. Chuck is. I don't know if it's so. 
I don't know. Well, well, okay, maybe not so. But Chuck, he's definitely ahead of everyone. It's like, I'm not entirely sure what his game is, but he is very confident in whatever it is. I mean, if he's pl- maybe his plan is less legal and more, oh, can I ruin, ruin Jimmy by making Kim hate him? Yeah, like but, a personal level. Yeah, but of course we already know that she kind of has an idea of what happened. Like she, she's already kind of aware of it. So she's kind of pieced it together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like she w- would instantly repel in horror. She, she has an idea of what's happened. Yeah. So would that blow up in his face? Would that make him more desperate if that is what goes down? It's like oh, it doesn't doesn't work. So he gets more desperate to like make sure Jimmy comes to justice. Mm. Uh, but it feels like he's now systematically trying to destroy his brother, which. It does, and this this feels like a, a proper rivalry now. Like before, yeah. it was kind of one sided, where there was like just uh, disdain, not not quite hatred, but just there the, there was a, an animosity. It feels proper vindictive, especially since Saul, for all intents and purposes, did. I mean, we talked about this a lot last season, how he tried to always help his brother, tried to make sure he was cared for. He did. He he, he bent his back, trying to take care of him. Yeah, like you know when when he, he gets hurt. Yeah, and and he's like he he rushes in anyway, even though he shouldn't. Yeah, uh, even but even before that though, but everything like yeah. just the the way he like spent like months of his life going over and taking him stuff every single day and yeah. being at like the fact that they have to pay someone to do this now because Saul's not doing it shows you how much work it is. It shows you how much time and how much of his life he spent doing this. So the idea that Chuck's been this vindictive, despite the fact that Saul has done shady things and despite the fact that it's wrong, it's like going back to what I said at the start about his heart being in the right place, because we know he's been doing all that out of love and now Chuck doesn't even care about that because because Saul broke a rule, because he just, on principle alone, he's going to be this vindictive, is kind of... I mean, obviously, sure, he went, he went a bit far in that he discredited him by making him look a fool in court. Don't get me yeah. wrong. That's that's more severe, maybe past stuff, but just the vindictive nature of it just feels so evil. It really does. I'm really looking forward to just watching his plot unfold and just seeing how it comes about. Here's my question. Do, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Chuck, Chuck could be dead by the end of this show, and this is, may not be a possibility. But do we see Chuck, or do we see someone else in the present day segment when the show eventually ends, and we see? him get caught I mean they realise who he is and we see him in court and does someone walk in Kim I think Howard. eventually we see someone I don't know if they see him in court I, I think almost they'll just see him and recognise oh, him yeah, maybe, sure. maybe it'll be Kim and, and she'll just let it go be like no you live your life yeah I'm, I'm kind of yeah I'm expecting that actually no, if, if not from this show then from <laughs> Breaking Bad like I'm expecting yeah. someone to recognise him at some point yeah it feels like too good an opportunity to have a great moment uh, and I could almost, I mean, hell, that could be the the final one. Like, where, however the show wraps up in in its main timeline, like the final scene, the, the final black and white segment could be Kim seeing him, and yeah. not turning him in, and that could be like this weird understanding of whatever happened. I'm not going yeah. to ruin you by. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Uh, if that ends up in the ending, I want cookies or something. I want bonus. Yeah, points. yeah, we we've just put that on the record. <laughs> uh. But there you go. That's that's the season premiere. Very I, I can't remember the last time an episode of TV went in this fast. <laughs> because like I was. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Episode eight of Iron Fist was easily just as quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. I can't even take that seriously enough to respond to it. Well, there were several times during this with uh, Saul, you're great, and, you know, Odenkirk, you're a great actor, but this is not quite up to the calibre of Finn Jones and Danny Rand. It's not quite <laughs> up to the calibre. There wasn't even a good ice cream joke all throughout this episode. So, uh, not enough food. That's a real complaint. I don't know. There was a lot of Cinnabon and stuff at the start. There was, but that was it then. Sure, maybe me in the mid for some uh, pastry goods, but okay. I mean, I've, I've got to put a complaint somewhere in it. All right, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Oh no, we're glad, like, happy to have Saul back. It's a yeah. great show. Uh, looking forward to spending the next nine weeks talking about this some more. Yeah. Uh, so let us know what you thought of the premiere in the comments below. A like and subscribe and all that stuff helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore first for channel updates. Uh, individual Twitters are on the screen for everyday ramblings. Oh. <sighs> Welcome back, Saul. Thanks for watching, guys. Have you got any vanilla?